Okay. Um, I love this little uh, slide that says sketch noting is a superpower. Um, there's something about listening and watching and recording with your hand, with pictures and text, that makes it much more concrete. It helps that process of getting it into you so that you don't forget it. And I know that some of you are concerned with forgetting. Just a few of you, uh, including myself with these brains. <laughs> so we're trying to, <laughs> to continue. Uh, Bridget, do you want to expound on that or was that just a, okay. Um, we are trying to, like Denise was telling, we're trying to exercise our brains because it's only for our very, it's only for good, good, good. So here's my, my goal today. Um, I got my sketchbook out and you'll see that I, I didn't realize until I was totally finished that I had it upside down. So I just flipped it over and I wrote, oops, flip it, always be willing and quick to change your view or your perspective. Um, and that's true. Always be willing to look at something differently. But I just wrote a little journal note in there. Back to Zoom classes after the renovation and move, uh, which started June 11th, and two full years almost of COVID. So um, I just wrote a quick little latest. And then I wrote out my plan for today. I'm gonna start with some tips then I'm going to move us to the sketch prompts that, that you might or, might or might not have done already. And then I'm going to do a little lesson on using basic shape shortcuts for your art. Uh, just a kind of a consensus of all the things I've taught through the years and how just using a quick ba basic shape will, will speed up your, um, your process. Um, and I actually had a lot of fun. They're tiny. There's my square people. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, let me move Steven out of the way here. Get out of here, Steven. Um, so there's my little square people. And then there's another little thing on structure. And after I added my ink pen, you almost can't see it. But just doing it helps me remember. Um, some frames, you know, add a little bubble, add a square, add a cloud, add a zap comic book. You know, <laughs> if you want it to have emphasis, add a little frame around it. Um, and then choose some different fonts. I know we all just write one way. Denise, yeah, jump in there. Um, a few days ago, I was working on a layout for a collage, and it includes a lot of the things that you're talking about now. <clears throat> but I was sketching it in my sketchbook to figure out how I wanted to lay this out. And it was that really funny one where it's going to be a birthday collage for my siblings and i have laughed so hard so long i kept myself awake at night laughing <laughs> i think about it daily and i laugh but then I, I found it very interesting because some of the things that you're pointing out right now i uh, have done in my little sketchbook and i wrote the things that i was thinking I wouldn't show it to you because I would show it to you, but I want to wait till I finish it. But I had, you know, I, I, in the preliminary, when I was deciding how to lay everything out, I was writing my thoughts and what I laughed about. And, you know, this was funny and this is, I know this is going to happen and blah, 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 blah. And it was pleasurable. Mm. It was very pleasurable that there was no, um, you know, there was no stress in, or have tos involved. It was, and I'll always remember the laughter that that piece brought me. Mm. But I was practicing in the sketchbook. I wrote the things, the things I was laughing about, but I was also learning about color and what I needed to combine and what simple shapes I wanted to incorporate. There was a lot that I was learning in that little page on my sketchbook. And I was also enjoying it at the same time. And I have no doubt that, that those moments that you were spending in joy doing that were adding health to you. Um, we, you know, we try to do all these things that make us healthier with no salt and all the things. But honestly, when you're doing something that you enjoy and you're laughing and you're, you're feeling this satisfaction, 
it's actually the endorphins and the, the, the enzymes. It's bringing health to you. It's lighting you up. It's lighting up the area around you. Um, the dogs can feel it. Rob can feel it. You know, you got to remember that. We, the choices we make are important. Uh, my sister sent me a little thing this week that said, is this, is what I'm doing or the decision I'm making supporting what I want to create in my life? Is it adding? Is it supporting what I want to create in my life? And, and being, de being deliberate about where we want to go in our lives is so important. So uh, thank you for sharing that, Denise. Um, and that's what I mean. Jump in when you have something like that because that spurs us on and makes us want to do it even more. Um, you can see my drawing. You, you can see my pencil drawing under here because I start with a little mechanical, cheap Dollar Tree mechanical pencil. Very lightly, easy to erase. And then I'll sit there, and I went and flipped back through one of my other little old sketchbooks of doodles, and the, the, the cheap books, the pencil marks were really faded and blurred. And so I'm finding if I go back with the little tiny fine tip India ink marker, or Jean can tell us some better ones that are probably more permanent, the uh, microns maybe. Uh, what else, Jean? Throw out some names there. Microns are always good, and so is an Identipen. Identipen. But it's so satisfying to go back over your, your pencil lines. Um, they're always better because I have a little pattern there, and I, I, I improve my writing. Um, if it's too short, I make letters longer because I can. there's a flow that comes when you go back. Do you guys feel that when you go back over it with a pen? There's something just very satisfying about going back. And oh, I know what it is, Christy. What? It's God's way of letting you cover your sin. You did it with a pencil. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and you're not so scared with the pencil. And so there's a little level of confidence when you go back over it with the pen because you've already, you see it on there and you're like, oh, it's pretty good. Let me make it a little bit better. But also the pen... One of the ones I'm using is a little cheap. It's like a uniball, I think, but it, it flows like a calligraphy uh, type thing. So there's a, there's a better, I can write better. A pencil kind of uh, drags a little, but there's a, with a pen, you've got that, that beautiful rhythm and flow. So, so I want to encourage you later to just start with a pencil or do it with a pen. There's no forgiveness. With a pen, you can't keep erasing and doubting yourself. So maybe you need a pen because you want you want to just keep going and, and not stop and correct everything and try to make a masterpiece. Um, that's an encourage uh, an encouragement not to always be trying to do that. Tips: Why do the why this sketch noting thing? What's so important about it? Um, here's a few things that helps us retain information more than a three pages of handwritten notes. You're going to see those little uh, icons, those little scribbles of color. And you're gonna, your brain is gonna go zzz, and it's gonna remember it more. It's very calming to draw a little picture, uh, and when you add color, it adds another level of calm and therapy. Uh, and the color just—I went and got all my highlighters: pink, green, purple, yellow—and I just highlighted a few little things in there, and it instantly kind of added a little zip in my spirit. Um, helps you see the big picture. Like when you look at a, a, a page of notes, and some of you aren't note takers at all, so you don't even care about this. But I promise you, if you want to learn, if you'll develop this habit of capturing ideas, and I'm going to show you a little video clip here in a minute uh, by that Artful. I sent you guys a link for the BYU TV, this Artful series. Did anybody get a chance to glance at that? Oh my goodness. Denise, did you? Um, it is, it is a different faith than mine, but I am open to everybody's experiences, and I just wanted you to, to know that. I'm going to show you some things, and hopefully it'll spur you on. Um, it's multi-sensory. It, you're using your eyes as you're listening. You're, you're, you know, like I said earlier, you're using your hands. So three ways it's getting into your gut to help you remember it. Um, let me give you, I go on the backwards here, let me give you um, a couple of tip sheets. These are all the whys. Um, it's what they call immersive learning. And, and look at this little um, guy in a sea of swiggles here. It's a tool for immersive learning. 
Um, that's a quick little, all you have to do is glance at that guy and you can see that there's, there's this lines around his head so he's learning and he's in this little sea. He's totally dunked under. Um, I love that. It's not a whole paragraph. It's just a little image. Um, it says it helps in sense making. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I could use some more sense. Um, and it's, it's, there's just something about dividing it up. Um, easy sharing and communication. Um, imagine if somebody left you or your husband left you a quick note on the counter and it was something like this with a little squiggle on it instead of, or if you left your husband, I should say something, a honey-do list, but it just had some little pictures on there. How much easier it would be for him to remember maybe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm winging it here. Um, and then here's, uh, this was from another sketchbook that I picked up the other night. And it was back in 2020 when we uh, were talking about sketching. And I tried to illustrate the one thing that I could do to get myself started. And that was to pick up the book. Half the battle. If I don't have it, if I don't know where it is, most of the time, I don't have the motivation to go dig it out. And then I start telling myself, well, I got to go find the erasers and I got to go find all my tools. I got to get the nice, which book do I want to do? The nice book, the watercolor book. I make it so complicated for myself that really it's only a matter of a pencil, which I'm sure you can find at any moment of any day, maybe in the bottom of your purse, and a piece of paper. Simple. And that's the one, it was during a time when I was teaching on one small step because our lives are made of many many small steps that we take toward either good or bad um, so that was my little illustration any quick comment about that have you determined what your small step is um, you know maybe that's another thing to think about here's a, a great and I'll post these uh, tip sheets later on the Facebook page but this one I really like because it's very simple and um, the reminder is that sketch notes are not comics or illustrated text. They are visual guides. They are not masterpieces. They are doodles. They are stick people. They are just, uh, I used icons. So whenever I had a thought, I would look up, what is the icon for blank? And it would show you a simple little stick figure of what that icon is. You can find an icon for almost everything if you Google it. Um, so first of all, here's some patterns. And we learned about patterns in years ago when I would teach on uh, Juliet Aristides, uh, the spirals and swirls. And here's the radiating um, pattern. And I'm going to go into a little bit more um, on these patterns. Modular Oh, I can't think of the names of them now. I have them in my book right here. Uh, use frames, like I said earlier. Squares, clouds. Put the shadow, put a little drop shadow on there too. That adds one more little element of depth to it that makes you feel good. Um, <clears throat> look at all the different kinds of separators or connectors. Arrows, squiggly arrows, uh, finger pointing. Once you draw that hand pointing one time, you're going to remember how to draw it again. Um, so zoom in on that thing and draw it. It's not hard. It's a rectangle, a circle, and um, what's that long thing called? A, a finger. A finger, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a column, uh, uh, a, a, a tube, a tube, uh, you know, anyway. Um, there's little hearts. There's a bow. There's a zigzag. There's footsteps. It doesn't have to have all the toes. It can just be a shoe footstep. There's a road with a dotted line in the middle. Um, and then there's just a dot and a dash. Those are some great connectors or separators. And be creative, you know. You do these a couple times, you're gonna think about them more often. And if you divide your ideas up into little spaces, <clears throat> it helps you, it just helps you see them differently. Here are, also in column four here are some bullets. From a dot to a circle, a star, a square, a heart, an arrow, a check mark. Um, so it's not all about images. You need some text on there too. And most often I found when I started this the other night, I start off with some text. 
And I had to erase a couple times because I was writing too much. And I've been doing that in my personal life lately of how can I say more with less? Because people only listen to about one out of every 10 words that you say probably. So how can you condense and go back and just make it very portable and succinct? Um, I'm using that word a lot. I don't really know if I'm using it properly, but here's some different fonts. You know, fat fonts, um, serif fonts, quick fonts, wiggly fonts, dark fonts, light fonts, slanted fonts. What do you call these that are um, outlined? Uh, outlined fonts. <laughs> um, change your font up because it, it changes the difference in what you're, how you're showing different portions of what you're recording. Or you may have an energy to what you've just put down and you want a very energetic font to go with it. Any thoughts about these? Are y'all jotting a few of them down? If you're not, screenshot it and go do it later. I promise you it'll, it'll make a difference with your art even. That's the whole point of this. Okay, again, I went back to the icons. Um, so I, I had my phone with me and I was away from the computer. I went over there on the sofa. If I'm at the computer, sometimes I feel more business-like and I'm more apt to get distracted because an email will pop up or I'll, I'm, a, I'm apt to go do some pay bills or something. I put my bill computer in the kitchen and this is my art computer out here. So I'm trying to divide mm -hmm. my life up into ways that I'm more, I'm less distracted because I have that disorder. Um, yeah. So, Christy, are yeah. these going to be, are these going to be on your, you said you're going to send these, right? I'm screenshotting I'm gonna, them, but. Good. I'm going to put them on the Facebook page too. Um, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to make a little folder that has, is called sketch notes. So each week okay. I'll put, I'll put some more tips and examples on there for you guys to use as well. Um, okay. but looking at the icons, those are great springboards when you're trying, you know, because I can't just think of how to draw something out of my head. But once I've started doing it, now I know how to d draw these square people. And since Bridget posted those sticks, um, I love those. If you didn't get to see those on Facebook, they're just little twigs, people, twig people. And they're, they're, some of them are running and some of them are, are have their hands on their hips. You know, however, it's just funny how you can very simply state a posture or an emotion with just a few lines. Um, and that's what we really want to do. We want to pare it down to simple. Um, um, so here again, use stick figures. Use Maybe even put a, a magnifying glass over it for focus. This is something I really want to remember. I want to go back. So draw a little. It's a circle and a line is all a magnifying glass is. Um, if it's a big idea, make it big. Uh, use big letters that are very bold on it. Use arrows. You know, on my little sketchbook here, when I did it upside down, I, I put a little arrow <laughs> to remind me to flip the book upside down. Now my next decision was, do I do the next page in this direction or do I flip it back over and get back on track um, with my sketchbook? Um, remember your simple shapes. We're gonna be talking about that later in the class. Um, squares, circles, triangles, um, squiggles, dots, arrows. Just, just be simple with it. It doesn't have to be hard. And the little lines behind this running man help indicate movement. So those are those are just simple things. I know these are very elementary for some of you because you're advanced, but we if we get too um, intellectual about all this stuff, uh, we, we will start to slip backwards sometimes. Oops, or we'll make it too hard. Here's another page of tips, um, and I love this. They are making the font uh, with the description. A high font, a low font, a skinny font, a fat font, font, fat font. Um, all caps, small caps. Kinder, which I guess that means kindergarten, elementary maybe. Um, fancy. Fancy is just adding another line and making parts of the letters squiggle. Um, fast font. Reverse font. Block font. 3D font. Dash and script. So be nice to yourself and give you some options rather than just your regular old handwriting. And some of you, I know, Jean, you have beautiful calligraphy handwriting, um, but not, not everybody. I and mean, you've trained yourself in that, right? 
You've trained yourself well, with some calligraphy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wanted to be able to write more varied and different and like, kind of like what you're doing. And I, I'll, I'll say this, you know, I'm married to the original redneck guy who wears camouflage all the time. <laughs> and so my life, and with Jennifer and all, we, we've watched uh, nature shows forever. And one thing we were watching this week, and these little animals were playing. You know, the little cats or the little um, wolves and everything. And it dawned on me that all animals learn from playing. And this is our playing. Yes. And so if we, if we play more, it can't do anything but help us. That's been our whole focus when last time we met was play. Uh, I'm going to show you some reminder screens of that. So you, you just segued us right into it, Jean. If you, we don't learn to play, if we take ourselves too seriously with this, we're going to end up with some, some roadblocks. Um, and I know probably some of you can raise your hand that you've been down that road of roadblocks. So, so that's why I thought in the beginning of the year, getting back to classes after six months of me not even picking up anything art, wise any art material um, I had to slide into it kind of easy and um, it's important to be gentle that's one of the things in my Al-Anon group it, it's just constant reminders to be gentle with yourself don't be so hard on yourself um, we're our worst critics sometimes Connectors. Uh, add some shadows to your doodles um, it gives them more depth and dimension and it's real easy, you know, you think about drop shadows. Well, if you use Photoshop or any of those, you can add a drop shadow on your font and all of a sudden it just goes bzzz. And you can drag that drop shadow out and make it really long. You can make it melt. There's all kinds of options for drop shadows, so that helped me. And people, look at the different kinds of people from, from just circles with a little hump down here to square people with a circle on top, um, color in your people, they're black, dark, or they're open and white. Um, these, I guess these are just holding hands. Um, so, so, you know, be creative with your people. They don't have to be people, people. Um, this was an interesting slide. There was three of these slides and they misspelled, I noticed that right off, structure. <laughs> It's such a professional worksheet. Web structure for sketch notes. And I'm such a spelling person that that hit me right off the top, but don't be distracted by it <laughs> since I pointed it out. Modular structure works well to contain information that fits together. So modular meeting having little little squares or, or um, segments that fit mm -hmm. together and then connecting them with dots. Um, Pictures help us remember. Um, and it says the term sketch in sketch notes can be intimidating sometimes because you feel like it's got to be worthy sketch and not a doodle. So maybe we, these should be called doodle notes. Um, that might be a little bit more, a little less intimidating. Um, it says sometimes it intimidates note takers into thinking they can't draw good enough and this is not true conveying the idea is the most important part of sketch note taking um, so body language is something you can just show with a few lines when I teach that proco lesson on figures and we'll get to that later um, on this month when we do basic shapes with figures it's amazing how few lines can indicate anger aggression calm, um, excitement with just a few lines. And if we can do that, I know it will help our, our more detailed art with keeping things very simple. Question marks, light bulbs, hearts, swirls, exclamation marks are examples of symbols that show emotion. So those are ways you can add a little extra to your note by just adding some of those. Um, and the lines around people, you know, that little swirl over the guy's head here indicates to me um, either an escalating emotion or maybe a little confusion, like whoop-de-doo, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but, you know, this person here is listening with the lines coming out of his head. So 
but that shows it's interesting that such small things can show um, more detail. I wonder, do they use this this uh, tip in um, these tips in um, art therapy or something like that? They probably do, huh? I, would I, say I mean, so. have you ever? Yeah, I've always been interested in art therapy and music therapy, and you know, and helping people cope with stuff. I've never gone to school for it, but I always desired to kind of, you know, use some some of these things and just, you know. Well, people, and, I guess. And if you can make it less intimidating by just yeah. giving some tips, which is what my whole goal was here, is to just, you mm -hmm. know, look, look at the ear. It's a number three with the question mark inside. We're going to talk about that later in the month with our basic shape shortcuts. Um, just hey, Christy? Yeah. This is Teresa. Um, this was, a, I wanted to show the, this book. I don't know if I can hold it up or not, but Let me I don't know if anybody's you. seen this book or not. Uh, I saw the author or the illustrator uh, being interviewed by, months and months ago, and I just loved it. And interestingly, the second thing that made me love this book was it's in cursive, and the little characters are just tiny sketches. Wow! Isn't that beautiful? I want to put book it. Book is beautiful. I'm going to put Jackie, it in the chat. Jackie, you love this part. I have no idea, yeah. Jackie, what this is, but it's music <laughs> notes, and I don't remember. Yes. I have no idea. <laughs> it's also on the back cover. <laughs> oh, Rita, yeah. It's a different song or continuation, but uh, Read us the title. a lovely inspirational book. I can't... The title is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. Okay. <laughs> The author is Charlie, M-A-C-K-E-Y. In the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, isn't that it amazing? It's so beautiful. The introduction is all cursive. That's what I loved. <laughs> I'm thinking people, kids of today won't be able to read this. <laughs> That's but, a great idea. But is it cursive? Whole, the whole book is just full of simple little things. You know, some of it's in color, like this page has one color, but one of the other one that's just nice. has the horse saying hello. Aw, that's but nice. The is just beautiful. I mean, the sayings, the, the, I don't know, I just, I pull this off the bookshelf probably once every two weeks and look through things just because it inspires me and makes me feel good. Oh, that's great. You. <laughs> that's oh, great. Thank you. I love that, Teresa. And that that's, again, what, what, you know, just stopping for a minute and taking something to let it, um, just put joy and comfort into your heart. You know, having those things around us, being deliberate to put those things around us. I love that. And and training, that's great training for how to state things more simply. We get too complicated with things. We try to dot yeah. every I and cross every T. I thought the cover just made me think about some of your classes because you notice on the, I'm sorry, I keep coming out on the horse's face. He's got little circles about three different places to get the shape right. Wow. You can see. I love that. Let me spotlight yeah, you I, again. I bought that book for my daughter-in-law because uh, she became overwhelmed after having her fifth baby. Oh. <laughs> and, oh. uh, and and was just trying to super mom everything. And the simplicity in that book mm -hmm. is just Im yep. immense. It just it yeah. narrows things down. Great focal ideas. Well, and did you notice in the horse, hold it up again, Teresa, did you notice the circles? Yeah, her, her, her drawing training or his drawing training, you can barely see it, tilt it forward just a little bit, tilt the top forward. Yeah, anyway, yeah. you can't hardly see them, but there's circles here, there's circles here. That's, that's that basic shape thing, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. And there's a beautiful rhythm to it that makes you just feel good. There's rhythm to her writing. That's just relaxing. It's just like this. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Please share anything like that that you have. That's that's a blessing. Um, that's what this is for. Um, here's a, another. Let's see. Add color when you have time, or simply at the end. You don't have to. You don't even have to add color. But there's something in me that always wants color. That's why I always had such a hard time drawing, because I wasn't content with just a drawing. I always wanted to get to the color. It, it stimulates and 
But there's also um, a scariness with color sometimes that you're going to wreck it. We've talked about that. So, Denise, this might be a great time for you to let me find that, that slide. Um, Denise did something. Can I show the slide, Denise? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Can y'all see that? <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This was your. She's so good at that. So That's good at that. Great. This was oh her prompt. Goodness. If it's ridiculous, that, I can do it pretty good. I guess. I love it. That's so that's, cool. That's nice. But well, tell how you did it because I was going to say sometimes. Um, what was I going to say? Um, using something you've already done. The, it's repurposing the art. Some of your art. If you're if you're just playing, you know, even though in these the these are scrap pieces of spray paper that I just stuck on. Christy sent out that email. Yeah. And she said, Here, here's a couple of prompts. And I so I challenged myself, okay, I'm just gonna do this in a few minutes. Well, that cutout, that horrible cutout of me, I already had that. I had I had actually hang on a minute, let me find it. I had actually sketched it a long time ago. Oh wow. I mean, and I'm so to... <laughs> what I what I did is it's just that's just a printed copy, and so I cut it out and slapped it on. Well, first I picked up a bottle, two bottles of spray paint, and I went splatter splatter, stuck that on there, and I thought, well, let's cut some circles out. So I cut it out, and I think, well, now I have to make it fit the criteria, you know, like my New Year's what I want in the new year. So I stuck that out. It was just a few minutes. Wow. And I used stuff, I used stuff that I already had. I just, you know, grab whatever was at a fingertip. It sometimes turns out better if you just don't think it through, if you just start throwing <laughs> together. And then all kinds of ideas start coming to you from doing that. So, but See, um, yeah. it, it, this is, Here's what I mean. Here's an example. So I did a long time ago, y'all seen this. I did this drawing. And I thought, well, what would it look like with color? So I did what Christy said a long time ago. And I had uh. it on watercolor paper and then I painted it. And then I thought, well, what would I do with it again? So then I took that and printed it in a little three inch square and I'm going to stick that in a sketchbook and I'm going to throw something else in there with it. I'm just going to have fun and be happy because that's important. Yeah. So, you know, I wish I can be that free. I wish I want to be that free to be. I just I'm stuck, Christy. Sometimes I get stuck and, and serious. I try to, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to be I even started looking at some abstract trying to break out. Because I just feel like, you know, you 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 uh, you expressed it perfectly where I am with uh, being trying to be free. Things, a sketchbook mm -hmm. is a perfect place to play with them and decide yeah. whether you want to do it or not. Well, well, I I did I did a little bit when we went home from my uh, sister in law's uh, funeral um, a, a few months ago, and I had this little sketchbook that I kind of played around with, um, like some sceneries. Um, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take over. No, 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 so, no, this is what okay. we're talking about. Because <laughs> okay, I was if, playing around with some sceneries just with watercolor while, while my husband was driving and I was looking at the mountains and everything. We went through Indian country and all that. And I just kind of, I know you can't even tell what it is probably, yes, but it was like- Yes, we can. Was, oh, okay. I was trying, <laughs> it was to me. Well, I'm, you know, I got to be more confident in it, I guess. And then I, I kind of sketched some trucks like that were in front of me. Can you see That's, it? Yes. And, That's and but great. I didn't get to add the color to it. But it's just a very small. I was I was remembering what Peach did when we went to the zoo. You had this little bitty uh, color um, watercolor case and 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 a little bit of water, and you were just going, you know, just being free. So I was, I'm trying to be free too. So yeah, I'm, did, you, did you have fun? I had fun. I want to just do it what, more. I, you were and I successful. Got, 
I got so much going on, you know, with with the music side and all that. And so every time I walk in my studio, I open it and I said, I got to get in here. And then I turn around and walk out because Becky, I have other, st other stuff going on. So you have 15 <laughs> minutes when you're drinking your coffee in the morning. Don't go in the studio, sit at the table with your sketchbook okay. and some watercolors and just screw around. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Take off uh, glasses if you can see without them. I don't paint with my glasses on. I can't yeah. see nothing without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have my glasses. <laughs> But Thank you, you for those minutes in the morning. Don't don't get fancy about it, right? Don't, okay. don't get fancy. Stay stay simple. And I want I want to segue us into. I'm going to share more tips on sketch noting, but I, yeah. I want to share a little segment with you that was so inspirational to me. Um, and I may have to change my setting here so you can hear it. This was from that artful show. I've got about three little two minute clips I want to share with you that were so inspiring on using okay. sketches to capture your ideas um, and see and use it as, a, and I actually doodled this, so I'll share that with you as well. So this guy's name is Brian uh, Kershiznik on a Zoom session. You see something that might be useful. One thing you find is that if it occurs to you, make some note of it and then decide later if it's a good idea. I actually feel like humans are creative. So-called creatives are people that are used to processing ideas in a certain way. It's not that they have more ideas. It's just that they're used to capturing them and developing them. Most ideas are bad. Most ideas for anybody are bad. But the people who can get a, a habit or a process of capturing them and reviewing them later and deciding which ones are worth pursuing are so-called creative. What I think is happening is that most people don't realize when inspiration is happening. They have an idea in their minds of what inspiration looks like, and that's not necessarily true. I think it's much more common. I think that we're much more likely to mistake inspiration for just our thoughts or our thinking. Inspiration, I believe, even revelation, involves a lot more work and not just sitting there getting data. I once heard someone say, it is hard for God to steer a parked car. <laughs> Many of us, I think, and myself included, will wait for inspiration. And that's not how it comes. If I sit in front of a white canvas waiting for a good idea, not going to happen. It is not uncommon for me to say, I need to paint. I don't know what to paint. Put paint on the brush and start looking for it. And I have found that to be uh, also true in almost every aspect of my life. Put it on and listen to it. Um, it's a freebie. It's BYU TV, which is, I think, Brigham Young University TV.org. Or you can put that, if you have a TV that streams, you just uh, can go to your apps and download the BYU app. And it has all kinds of programs on it. That The, the Chosen is one the way I got there because I was watching that movie about Jesus' life. And there's two seasons of that on there that are just phenomenal. But but check that out. But, but what do you think about what he says? I mean, you see him there with his little doodles in his sketchbook. Most of the painters I've studied with, like Joel Knapp was one that always had a little flip chart and he would always do a quick little, he would stand out there in the middle of a field and do a quick little sketch to kind of capture what he wanted to do. And he'd flip the pages and do two or three or four until he decided what he wanted to capture. Uh, let me stop the share. Denise. You know. uh, <clears throat> I just thought that what he said about uh, God can't steer a parked car <laughs> was good. <laughs> You know, you've got to get up and do something. <laughs> it's just life. If you want some, if you want, I can pray until I'm blue in the face, but if I don't put a little elbow crease behind it, you know, he'll give me the grace to move on, but I, I need to shut up. So. <laughs> no, no, listen, I, the reason I spent so much time good. capturing these little segments is because they're so profound. <laughs> It's little yeah. statements of God can't, you know, he has, can't steer a parked car. 
How many you times? You got to do something. We yeah. walk around, we say, oh, I need to paint. Oh, I want to paint. Oh, I need to paint. But, oh, gosh, I got to cook supper. Oh, I got to get this done. Oh, I need to do that first. <laughs> I need to call them. And we just don't ever get to it. Domino's yeah. Pizza delivers, you know. Mm. What? what? Domino's Pizza delivers. That's right. <laughs> oh, I was painting the other day and screwing around, and I went, oops, dinner time. So I went to the freezer and popped a pizza, which I normally cook a lot, but sometimes I'm just busy painting. <laughs> And he can eat pizza and like it, and he does. You know, and I, uh, I, I love that, Peach. You've made a decision, a conscious decision, that you are going to do art every day. Uh, it might be a little overreach for some of us, and I, I could do it if I want to every day. I, I have wish to, I could. I have to plan for it. I have to decide what, Me too. what is important in my life and what I want to do. But I do know, yeah. because every one of you are here, um, that art is in your heart to do and, and and it's something that god has given you and it's like that parable of the talents mm -hmm. you know what are we going to do with it are we going to bury it are we going to are we going to honor god by doing what he's put in our hearts to do i don't believe that's an important inspiration for it um i did uh, i wrote down a few of his notes um because I, I was, yeah i couldn't capture them fast enough yeah i don't think you guys give yourself enough credit i mean i'm i'm serious you know i've been sick the past two years and your Facebook with uh, with um, Denise she captures soul even if it's funny soul she captures it so and <laughs> Pete, she she, she uh, I admire the tenacity that she has yep. follow through and yep. you with music you know I tell you all the time God gave my daughter the voice and me the love of music you know she went to berkeley yeah. called music in boston and 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 um christy your heart you you just don't understand how inspirational just your little facebook yep. yes yeah. well, stop complaining you don't have time <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so thank you for that i mean i all that's why i was rushing home you know on tuesday on tuesday mornings I've, I've committed to join a church, you know, I'm, I'm on a praise team and we do a prayer on Tuesday mornings and, and it's over at 10. I'm trying to rush home to get here. I'm so glad you changed the time because I'm trying to rush home to get here just to even listen to you guys and, and to laugh and to all the little things, Christy, everything that you does that you do is very important. And what everybody is saying, you guys are blessing me so much. I know. So I appreciate all of you. This is my art family. You know, you guys are my family, so I just wanted to express that. Yeah. Thank you. And you know what? My like my little grandson used to say, my eyes is widening. I'm not crying. My eyes are just widening. But <laughs> my eyes is widening as y'all are sharing that because it's it's a mutual um, exchange that we have that's so vital and so important. Um, and yeah. Again, when we get plucked out, it's like that log that gets taken off the fire. Uh, and set over to the side, it goes out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. when we're in the fire and when we're together, because we have that same uh, art heart. Um, that yes. was your website, Jean. Your art art heart, wasn't it? Heart art or art heart. <laughs> um, we share that in common, and we have to keep meeting together. And so, again, don't let anything take you away from it. Let me yeah. share this because I have another little video clip I want to share with you. Um, there's a couple of these that that are talking about that very thing getting um overcoming the obstacles let me move it around here uh, you know me when i start doing this i keep finding so many things i can't stop myself um i'm gonna show da, 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 da. that was the play thing i'll get back to that this guy zachary proctor this is another one in this series of called artful and uh i apologize it's going to be shaky because of the zoom there's no other way I can get around that, but just give to the painting. Whoop, listen to the message. Hold on. Is what you're going to get from the painting. If somebody asks me, well, what are your paintings about? Sometimes I want to say, my paintings are about honesty or integrity or overcoming the obstacles of life or endurance. So the paintings are about godly things, but they're not necessarily about specific representation of God or Jesus or or what I believe. The painting on my easel is, is a man sitting on a chair on the edge of a building and he's balancing. It was a real person.
person 100 years ago in 1919 who would travel the country, kind of like a daredevil. But it's also kind of an allegory for trying to be an artist, or start a business, or have a family. It feels like life is this balancing act. If you go one way too far or the other way too far, catastrophe might happen. We all feel it on some level that we're trying to balance things just right in life. So as I paint the painting of managing, me personally, and trying to figure out how I can be a better father, or a better husband, or a better painter, or a better friend. We get kind of cynical, and we go through life, and things become so ordinary. Life is kind of about overcoming whatever obstacles in front of you. You can either give up and sit down and say, I don't want to do it, or this is too hard, or I'm done. Or you figure out how to go over it, or around it, or under it, and get past it. Then look for the lessons from above, and then I try and put those lessons into paintings. If you want to be inspired by God, I think first you have to open your heart. I mean, that's kind of, to me, what what art is all about, is finding beauty, finding connections, inspiration, motivation, and ultimately, it makes you want to be a better person. pause for just a minute because I wanted you to see the um, every single one of these that I've watched so far has been so inspirational but that painting um, sitting on the edge like that it, don't you feel that way sometimes what isn't that a powerful um, and, and and to think of what we can do as artists what you know you can take a big piece of canvas of blank paper and you can put some powerful image on there that thousands of people can relate to and go, oh, you feel that way too. Um, I mean, I have chill bumps as I say that, that we've been given this ability. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Um, when you looked at this guy's, he was really good. He was a really good portrait painter and, and all kinds of paintings. But but some of the other ones that I watched, they, you know, they were really good, but they chose to come in the back door and do it kind of almost like folklore, archaic. Um, just to get the message across so you didn't get distracted by the the beauty of the thing so much as by the message of the thing. Um, any thoughts about that, the tension of it, the um, then that, that scripture at the end that he had. That scripture at the, at the end, I have just loved that one for so long. I can't quote it. Could you, do, is it available to you to read it again? Yes. Let me but that, that's meant a lot to me. I, I just think it reassures yeah. you that God appreciates the work we do. That's right. He's filled him. He hath filled him with the spirit of God that he was wise, intelligent, skilled in all manner of workmanship, artfully working on gold, silver, and brass, cutting and using gemstones, carpentry, creating all manner of artful work. Um, it's all beautiful. I, it's Love it. It's just beautiful. And it, it, if we need permission, there it is. If we need inspiration, there it is. It's like yeah. it's the talent that's been placed in your hands. What are you going to do with it? Um, let me, and I'm, I'm kind of sidetracking, but I, I wanted to have these in case I could share them with you. Here's a young mother that has four or five children. Um, let me, it's only about two minutes. Let me share her testimony with you. And she's not a morning person. So whatever our excuses are to ourselves, um, here you go. Let's see, am I sharing the screen? Every single morning I want to go back to bed. <laughs> when, um, when my husband and I got married, he tried to convince me for years that mornings were magical. And I'd always just been more of an idol. But at a certain point, like it just became a necessity because I just couldn't work late at night anymore. And so I had to make a shift to becoming a morning person. I don't know if I'm actually a morning person, but I do recognize that it is magical in that it's a little more peaceful and uninterrupted and that I can kind of count on this time more consistently than other points in my day. It's a great place to just to sort of 
sort through some thoughts first thing in the day and have some quiet before the bustle begins. Some days it's harder to figure out um, kind of where to start, but that's only if I come to a really clear stopping point the day before. But normally, I, I'm so used to being interrupted and stopping and starting, and my work, I think, lends to that, that it's pretty easy to sit, jump in, and I think that's one of the reasons why I can do it as being a mom, because I just, I don't have to sit there and think about what I have to do, I just can jump in and do it. My kids sometimes will say, Mom, I want, you know, I want you to turn a show for me, I want you to come do this with me, and I'm like, all right, I just, you gotta give me 15 more triangles. And so it's easy for them and it's easy for me to, to say, okay, there's there's a clear stopping point instead of, I think if I was, I don't know, a landscape painter or something and I was kind of needle this tree until it's, until it's there, that's kind of a little more of a nebulous time frame for them. So that I think they appreciate the, the concrete nature of measuring time and shapes. Um, one of the things she talked about was working around the obstacles and it's hard to find a starting point and it's hard to find a stopping point. Do you find that to be true? Um, that, that those are obstacles. You don't know, you don't want to stop because it's 2 a.m. and you're, you're on a roll and then you, you can't figure out how to get started because you're blocked or you're, you're distracted. Um, and, I, and I loved, I, wrote, I was writing this down which is why I got messed up. The concrete nature of measuring time and shapes. And that's what her paintings are. I've got another little short clip to show you from her too. Her paintings are just beautiful, but they're little tiny squares and triangles, like pointillism. And they're just, the, the feeling of them is very spiritual and very beautiful in the colors. Um, but breaking it down, and one of the quotes she says in this next segment is, um, talks about spirituality and, and how hard her spiritual life was at some points of trying to get into scripture and do things all the right way that she thought was the right way and how she's finding that a spiritual life is made up of many tiny moments, like her paintings. And to honor that, that it's, oh my gosh, look at the sunrise, and that few moments of just soaking it in and letting it light you up, or instead of thinking you gotta be all these things and do all these things and go do this and preach that, and it, it, it's very powerful, the way that she's describing her spiritual walk as such a young woman. Any quick thoughts, and I'll show you the second part. This is, they've moved to another country for a time, and she's, I've kind of jumped in the middle here, but she's explaining some of the obstacles of not painting. She hasn't been painting since the move. I could relate to. But after a while, I, I really did feel something was kind of missing for me. And I was like, I just really wish I was painting right now. My husband recognized this in me. He's like, you need to paint again. Like, you need to get the going. And I was like, I just... There's so many hard, it just sounded so hard because everything was hard there. Like we didn't have a car, so I'd walk every place, I could look up where it was, and I didn't know any of the words for, you know, linseed oil or whatever. Like I didn't have any of this vocabulary. She helped me kind of look up the words and the phrases and went with me and we found the, the paint store and we went in and there was a lot of gesticulating and but I, you know, I got my supplies and came home and it just like opening a tube of paint and just like the smell and the whole thing, I was just like, I'm so happy. And, and it made me realize like I needed this for me. That I was a better page when I was painting, that I could mother better, that I was a better wife because I was taking this time to like feed myself in that way that I needed. I can paint and I can be a mom and they don't need to be these conflicting things. Yes. If you had asked me, as a teenager, what's the goal for you? I would have told you to have a big, huge table in my studio, to have all my kids in there working on stuff with me. And I'm like, this is it, I've arrived, right? So then I'm like, where do I go from here? This is like, I'm living the dream, like in every single way. But yeah, I did not know that that dream would come with so much of these competing um, priorities. so many little leaps of faith. That's what I try to depict, is like the feeling of praying, the feeling of working tirelessly, the feeling of like being 
you know, surrounded by a spirit, but not knowing what that looks like. I feel like most of my religious life is intangible. I'm trying to illustrate an experience in a way that's really abstract, but with an entry point that you can say, have you felt this way too? Like, do you know what it feels like to feel like you are a soul with intelligence? I hope to just like set a stage where someone can say, what's this about? And they can maybe have a moment to, to have that spark of divine in them. of God like what does that say about like he created lions and tornadoes and like unwieldy jungles and desolate spaces and like what does that mean about him like is he is he wild is he um is he desolate is all scripture like spoken from the mouth of God, like how do I take that as I'm trying to understand the nature of God? Is this someone else's understanding of God that I'm then taking and trying to filter through my own experience with God? I love just being vulnerable to that and allowing myself to see the contradictions. To sit in those uncomfortable middle spaces and say, this is a life of faith too, this uncomfortable middle space of like searching and wondering is a faithful life. It's easier for me to ponder when I'm doing something visual or working with my hands and it is when I'm reading my scriptures, it offers a sense of humanity because sometimes the written word doesn't get to as much. It turns me inward and it makes me think that everyone is on this journey of finding God. That's what art does. It allows that searching part of me to kind of come forward and to wonder and to ponder. <sighs> so I, I, every time I listen to that, it's been about wow. I write more things down. Um, she was a better page. She was a better person when she took time to do art. Um, <laughs> when she fed herself that way. And, you know, they, they tell you in Al-Anon that, you know, with the plane goes down, you need to put your mask on first before you put it on the child. Um, and I think that's something that's, we get backwards so much because we're all such caretakers. And we're all, even if we're not physically caretaking, we're thinking about other people. And that blocks us sometimes from doing the thing we need to. How many times have you said when you're doing art, you're not thinking about anything else? Um, mm -hmm. you're, it's therapeutic. It lets your mind rest. Winston Churchill said that 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 was you know the only way that his mind would totally shut off from all of that. I watched. I don't know if y'all have ever seen this um, that Winston Churchill movie. I, we just watched it the other night with Gary Oldman. This present darkness or something like that. But anyway, it was fabulous. What a man. I mean, what a man. And we can learn so much from other people in their in their testimonies like this. A moment to have that spark of the divine, she said. A moment to have that spark of the divine. And, and how many times have you pulled, backed up from the easel and gone, oh, whoa, it was a, it, maybe it's just a color. Or maybe it's just, you've got a face on there and you're like, oh, I did that with that big angel that I've got in Destiny's room and nobody else really likes it. But when I finished it that night, it was about two in the morning, it's a four by four canvas. And I copied somebody else's work, but I loved it, and I changed it a little bit. When I stepped back from the initial drawing, it was like a presence was in the room with me. And I have my kid, I have Matt and Andrew, my kids are in the bed underneath this huge angel, angel with a, a, a spear and a light in his hand. And that was important to me because it signifies God's protection over my kids, whom I worry about the most. And so I can't get rid of that huge painting. I found a place in this house for it. Nobody else really cares about it or knows, but it's, it was a spark of the divine for me because it reminds me and helps spur my faith on. So we're, we're, we're depriving ourselves of those moments, those sparks. If we are doing everything else, we're running around like human doings instead of human beings, trying to do, 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 do more. Um, I'm going to say this quickly and then I'll let somebody else jump in and share. I have been pulled out of everything due to COVID. 
Um, I don't, I'm not, I haven't been to church in two years. Um, I'm not, I haven't been teaching these last six months. I'm not doing, I'm not obligated or committed to anything right now, but moving, getting settled in this house, taking care of these children, which is a complete joy almost all the time for me. Um, I don't, it's very awkward to me. I don't know how to do this because I've always done so much. Um, so it's an opportunity though for me to stop and do instead of what I should do and what needs to be done to do what I want to do and have and it's called freedom it's called freedom from compulsion or what I feel like I must do because I just can't feel good unless I do this or people need me or people depend on me the difference is the fruit that I feel with you guys there's no compulsion about this at all it's there's so much fruit when I meet with you guys when I teach when I get these PowerPoints together I can't even describe it um, so I'm honoring fully for the first time in my life probably um, I'm honoring what is really in me to do any thoughts about these videos or anything you want to share you just you just like speaking what I like I want to say <laughs> It's hard to express some things, um, but exactly what you said is where I am. It's like, I, I got to do things before I do what I really want to do. I have other uh, other obligations before I do what I really want to do. It's like, and I can't stop. I, I got to keep going. I don't, I can't, I can't be still. I, um, it's always something, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to be more fulfilled in doing my art. Um, I just want to do more in that. So, and that and that girl, I don't know. She just she went pretty deep. She did. She went, and I can't express stuff like. I mean, I I probably can. I just don't know how to put it into words. But when you when you speak some things, it's like that's what's in my heart. I, I don't know. I don't know if we connected to the hip or not. But you're just saying exactly <laughs> what I feel. <laughs> so. But we're going to get through this. We are. And, to, and she, another thing I wrote down, and she said, to be able to sit in these middle places where you aren't, um, you're not there yet. You're not, you're not doing what you really want to do sometimes. And I have, I, I brought, and I just hung it up in the hall, my little chalkboard that I had in my office over there that I wrote years ago on a New Year's resolution. If you could do anything you want to do, what would you do? And, it, and it's such a good question to ask myself every day, what do I want to do right now? Because I've, I've not hardly ever, but I will always say I love being busy. I love gardening. I love all these things that I do. I love teaching at church. I love, you know, all the things. I love them. I love them. I love them. What do you love best? What is actually producing fruit in your life? Even relationships. But it's just a, an examination of our lives and what, what is true and what brings fruit and what makes you shine 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 what makes you light up and are you putting is what i'm putting out in the world um the direction that i want to create what do i want to put out to them here's a difference in just adding some highlighters to your notes just going back over it uh here it is black and white here it is with a few little highlights is it different? Does it make a difference? It does, doesn't it? Um, and it's easy, easy peasy. There it is, a another, and that's just, this is a Faber Castell, Castell, I'm not sure if I say that right. Jean, what's the, is Jean still here? She had to slip off. She had to slip off. Um, it, this is on their page, so I'll put that, that link on there as well. Here's a little library, Sketch Notes Library. They have a little article on the Faber Castell page with these. Um, and Bridget sent me the note for the square people, and I'm going to post that if she doesn't on Facebook, too. Uh, that was great, Bridget. It was a whole little, it looks like a video, was it? On the square people? Awesome. I love that. Because, you know, my people have to be good. <laughs> I, I, I need a big lesson on square people and just keep it simple. Um, here's another one for lettering. And look at the truck and the bus up there and lunch and just simple, just simple little little notes. 
Um, here's another one in a different language, but you can just see how adding the color made it so much more fun. Minimal colors, necess not necessarily, but um, uh, you can just see how it, this moves you all around the page with all these little pictures. They move you constantly. And these were last, um, this is just a recap for the, mind, for the sketch notes. Uh, Denise shared these with us last in December when we met. The body heals with play, the mind heals with laughter, and the spirit heals with joy. Um, our mindset is so important. And watch what you let yourself think. Uh, you know that scripture that says, take captive every thought, um, and thoughts especially that are tripping you up. So remember to play and consider it play. I'm just going to sit down here and play. Um, it's a way to capture ideas. It's therapeutic. It's calming. It develops and exercises your senses. It increases your focus. It retains a way to help you retain information, and it helps you with the big picture. That was just a quick uh, synopsis of what we've talked about. Here's the here's some symbols for um, play. <laughs> I looked up icon. I, I wrote a little testimony on there. Every time I start to think too seriously about sketching, getting myself too organized, trying to find every tool, I have to rein myself back in. And Denise shared about the big stop, big red stop button. So I put that on there. You, you just hit the button and say stop it when you find yourself thinking that that stupid stuff. Um, so I put that. And then there's a little simple play button. If you have to put that the, at the top of every one of your sketch pages, put that little arrow for play or put those little kids with the kickball. Um, do it. Um, Last thing on play is play is the highest form of research. That's an Albert Einstein quote. And scientists have discovered that it takes approximately 400 repetitions to create a new synapse in the brain, unless it is done in play, in which it only takes 10 to 20 repetitions. So remember that. If you're looking at it as some big monumental thing, um, you're not gonna, it's not gonna get through as much as if you're looking at it as play couple of illustrations and then this was that balancing act thing you know um, there is a balancing act to all this of what to let go and what to what to grab hold of if you have your sketchbook and you want to sketch along with this um, this is my basic shapes for flowers this worksheet that I have up on the screen um, this was one I found many years ago when I first started doing art, and I've carried this with me and kept it. Um, I don't know what book it's out of. I found it. It is. So it stays in my mind all the time, especially for birds. Just the simplicity of a bird or a horse or a flower. All circles. You can use circles for most things, not everything. So circles are a big part of this, but for flowers, uh, there's two main things that I use when I think about flowers, a cup and the ellipse. Um, a cup or a bowl, almost all flowers fall into this category. You can find a cup somewhere in the flower. Um, there is a website called emptyeasel.com, how to draw realistic flowers using the bowl method. So if you want to make a note of emptyeasel.com, there's a good little tutorial that has a few images on it. Um, but I also have Helen Van Wyck's worksheet up here that I love because it shows, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger for you. It shows an uh, arrangement of flowers and it shows how, this is how we typically do it. We put all the circles facing the viewer. But you know, when you arrange flowers, they face all different directions. So that's where the ellipse comes in. And so not only is there the circle and the ellipse or the cup shape, but there's also identifying where the, where the center of a flower is. So if you, if you don't decide from the very beginning where the center of that flower is, you're gonna put the center smack dab in the middle of that flower that you've just drawn, even if it's an ellipse. Sometime, and I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. But drawing yourself a little cup, uh, and here's a few examples, and I'll be posting these as well. Uh, but here's a daffodil, and you can see a circle and a little tube for the daffodil. You could actually fit another circle inside the, 
the, the cup shape, but it's a cup and a circle, basically. A circle for the daisy. And of course, this is the example I'm talking about in the middle of the daisy completely facing you and the center being smack dab in the middle. Very rarely does a flower look like that out in the garden or in a vase. Typically, it's facing a diff different ways. And so you have to figure out, is the center way down here? Is the center over here? And it's facing to the left. So putting a little dot where the center is, is vital. And you can see in this illustration of a rose, there's the cup. It starts with the cup. And then there's a little alternating spiral that I'll show you here in a minute. So if you can put a little sketch note in there of circle, cup, and, and a dot for the center, then you're on your way to making almost any flower you want. All right, so this daisy is facing up and left. So the center of this daisy, can you see my cursor? Can y'all see my cursor on here moving around? The center is way down here at the bottom of the ellipse. You, you might say it's up here, but the center is actually down inside the cup here. So every petal will move towards this center. If you put the center here, then you're immediately going to start pulling your petals down from up here. And they don't go that way. They go from here. So if I can teach you anything about a shortcut for a flower, it's that those three things, circle or ellipse, cup, and where's the center? Practice your ellipses. That's a really good thing to do. Ellipses, if you get your hand going sort of in centrifugal motion, um, you can make a better circle or ellipse than if you just try to draw it real, real slowly. Get your hand going and practice before your pencil actually hits the paper making. You can see that's what they've done on this purple flower here. Look at all the, the centrifugal motion that's in that. It's just round and round and round until you hit it and then you get a perfect ellipse. Don't try to be all detailed. Get that hand moving and practice that rhythm. It says on here, ellipses are just circles turned in 3D space. Uh, in artistic 3D terms, the width of an ellipse is called the degree. This is probably because it represents the angle of the circle relative to the viewer. At 90 degrees, the circle is perpendicular to the viewer, so the whole circle can be seen. At zero degrees, the circle is parallel to the viewer, so it looks like a thin line. So if you're a math person and you want to measure degrees, that's, that's the equation right there. Uh, sometimes a flower is almost totally squashed. So if you don't know that and you start drawing a flower out of your preconceived notion, you're almost always going to get it wrong. Reading her notes, we can therefore use ellipses as cues for how organic form is turning in space. It is a more fluid approach to perspective because the standard approach would require too many vanishing points, one for each ellipse. This is very similar to the organic perspective exercise she showed in something else. Well, here's another example uh, with poppies. Maybe they're poppies, I think. Find the center and all the petals will go towards the center. I know you, some of you already know this, but it's just basic. It's just shortcuts. It's just basic, simple shapes to start with. So on the right-hand side of this screen, the center for this poppy is about two-thirds of the way down and a little bit to the right of center. This one is almost smack dab in the center. This one is all the way down at the bottom. This one is all the way down at the bottom. This one is all the way down at the bottom. So you see how if you put that dot in there, each petal can come up from that dot in a radiating, and, and it's a big two ellipses almost. You could do overlapping ellipses for these flowers because you're seeing down inside the cup out to you. Here's another example of the same thing, poppies and daisies, and um, even buttercups fall into this too because they have a cup in the center. Um, Buttercups on the right and trumpet or morning glories are more of a trumpet shape. So it's still a cup shape. You still need to know where the center is, but it's basically a circle and a bit of a triangular tube.
on there. So keep it very simple when you're drawing those. And note the direction the flower's facing. I can't, I can't tell you how many uh, vases or vases full of flowers I've seen and all the flowers are facing the viewer. I've got an example of that on my flower drawing lesson. Um, and it just looks weird. Uh, but that's our preconceived idea of how to paint a flower. You just, everybody, we need to see it. So we just turn them all towards us. Here's another uh, example of a, the bowl shape in the center of this lotus or lily. Um, and the center is way down here. So you could draw a big circle for the entire flower. You could make sure your center point is down here two thirds of the way down, which is probably the most common way you see flowers is about two thirds of the way down is where the center is. There's another ellipse for the top of this cup shape. So there's really like a little trumpet inside the middle of this lily. I did that little bench outside my studio that I used to have and I gave that away to a friend. Um, I did those water lilies and I thought about this the whole time. They were so much easier when I remembered this basic shape, a cup and a circle. Another one, a tulip, um, same thing. And a tulip or an iris, they still have that cup shape. Um, and then if you wanted to think about it this way, the bottom of an iris is an upside down cup shape. If you flipped it over, those petals that hang down are also hanging in sort of a cup shape. So it's, it's putting two cups together. Um, but it'll really help you to do these ellipses. Even the bottom, if you, if you this um, tulip on the left, is, it's two ellipses and an oval. So putting that bottom ellipse in helps you think about the depth of that tulip. I really enjoyed it a lot. Well, I want to tell you the testimony is that I have, when I look back at my sketchbook, when we did that together, I really had a lot of pleasure flipping through those pages and what I had done. Not that it was some great art, but all the notes that I took and the things that I, the, the prompts that we had, Bridget, you're so great with the prompts and how you capture things with prompts. Um, and then my old, my old master's notebook over there is like, wow. In fact, I thought I'd lost it when we moved and I was like, oh no. But Peach, I don't know what you do with all those paintings that you do every single day. But it, uh, it, when I moved, I gave away a lot of paintings. I threw some in the garbage um, that were bad. It was the first time I've ever taken a whole stack of 16 by 20 paintings and thrown them in the trash. Um, wow. And it felt good. I, I, I hope you destroyed them first. No, I don't, they didn't have signatures on them. Okay. Um, I made sure of that, that there was no, they were studies. They were just head mm -hmm. studies that I did, but um, I, I didn't, I didn't have the energy or time to destroy them. I don't, <laughs> so they I just went, them. you burn them. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't have a place to burn. burn them. We have a bonfire. It's fun. I, have a, I know a lot of people do that, but I, I don't want <laughs> to be remembered by those paintings. So it really was kind of freeing to know that everything I have does, I had to pare down because we were moving. Um, so I did that and I felt good about it. But the sketchbook, the masterpiece sketchbook over there is a treasure. It doesn't take any space. It can go on a bookshelf. Mm -hmm. It can go on a coffee table. So I'm going back to that with my studies. I don't know why in 1993, when I first started studying with Daniel Green, he had to bring 20 by 24 canvases to do these heads on. Wow. Huge canvases. So I'd put this head in the middle life size and it would just be lost. And I hated it from the get go. So now I've pared it way down to a sketchbook and the nice Stillman Byrne, thank you, Jean, uh, archival sketchbook that I just owe the pages to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Denise. Of course, this is water under the bridge, but what would have been cool is if you had taken all those paintings and cut little pieces out of them with your favorite parts and put them in a sketchbook. Oh. Blew them into your book. that would have been wonderful oh that's to so have good. Kept that ear and that eye or that lip or you know and then just put them in and then nobody's going to use them after you cut them apart anyway but just repurpose wow. it think don't get rid of stuff cut it up and use it for something never if nothing occurred. Else, it'll make you laugh never even occurred to me and that would have been so well it's not like you had the time right then in the <laughs> yeah of the exactly but it is something to file away for in the yeah. future 
Well, if it's on paper and stuff, it's easier, Denise. If it's on like a, you know, like a, a board, sometimes it's hard to do if it's on canvas board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, canvas board, so. yeah, but if it's just a simple canvas, yes. you know, yes. you could cut it. But a canvas board would be a different story. Yeah. But here's the thing. I took pictures of them all before I threw them away because they Pretty, were my- cut them out and put them in the no, book. <laughs> I can, I, I'm redeemed. I can still yeah. do it because there were parts of them that I really liked. There was one lady that modeled for us that was very old and she had a million lines in her face, a million. She had smoked for most of her life, and but she had a oh. purple hat with, with stones all over it and a purple outfit and big earrings. And it, she was so bright and colorful that I loved her. And I love doing it, but I, where am I going to put that big, awful painting with all those lines? on? <laughs> but I could go back and I could, could grab a little piece of the purple hat. You know, her name was Micah. I'll never it forget. Never, yeah. You'll never have forget. a fun time doing that. I will. Thank you for that. That's so awesome. What a great idea. You guys never cease to amaze me with your ideas. Um, um, I have circles. It's mostly circles for the animals too. The following week is going to be the head and features, lips, nose, mouth. I know I've taught you guys these things already, but they're going to be great reminders for me to, to pair them all the way down to the most basic shapes, no details, basic, 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 and put them all together in my sketchbook so I can remember. And the last week is going to be on the figure. And I didn't even get finished giving you the examples of those on the PowerPoint, but um, I'm excited to, to cover these each week. And it'll only be maybe a 20 or 30 minute segment at the end, probably. But we'll see how it goes. And uh, we'll, we'll continue with uh, the ske sketchbook themes. Did anybody get a chance to do the themes? I know we've seen Denise's. Let me go back to that one. And anybody want to share if you got a chance to do the New Year's, your ideal New Year's celebration? I challenge you all to make yourself look <laughs> as beautiful as I did in that <laughs> Well, I started on my New Year's. Oh, that's yeah. cool. It's called tipsy because the glass is tips, tipped. But I'm going to steal from Denise's idea. What I was going to do was bouquet effect bubbles in the background. Now I'm going to turn those into circles with words of what I want to achieve <laughs> this year. That'll be so, fun. It's just a start, but that's where I'm at. Great ideas. And words I are great because there's, you know, that's exactly what we're talking about with sketch notes is just pick a word uh -huh. and, and let that be your watchword for the year of what you want, you know, for the new year. It was liberating to me, or it was a lot of fun to me just to go into it without any preconceived, you know, ideas, just to start throwing stuff on the page and see it just come together. They're the right one. My ideal new year celebration is declining invitations to parties. Cause we usually have a few invitations and for what prospers my soul. And that's been hard because you hate to let people down if they've invited you to their party. Um, and so I drew a little, I looked up icons. I drew a little fireplace because I now have a little gas fireplace here at the big house and an easel and the five of us. And that's how I spent it. Matt, Mark, Devin and Destiny and myself. And that was my ideal celebration this year, staying home because I love my home. Um, my 22 wish word, I put wish word or prayer is, you know, guidance from above with my decisions because I've kind of been pulled out of everything right now. So as I'm being invited back to participate in things, they want me to come back and teach at the little school where I teach. They may give me tuition for Devin and Destiny. I, I need help and guidance from above. I do not know if I want to do that. So, um, and in my Al-Anon group the other day, we were talking about one word wishes. And one of the girls said, I'm off duty. And off duty is my word, not doing things out of duty bound motivations, but I'm off duty from fixing, managing and meddling in other people's affairs. Um, and are my decisions based on God's guidance, joy and not duty bound? Um, and then I found in my other sketchbook, this quote from a art boot camp I went to that says success equals the amount of freedom I have in my life. And I thought that was relevant to my, my goal. So when you make a goal and you start paying attention, you'll see supporting themes and what I call sacred echoes all around you to kind of help you 
go in that direction. So anyway, you see, it's not some great masterpiece. Um, you see, it's just my doodles in my, in my sketchbook. Uh, and that's, that's all it needs to be. It doesn't have to be anything beautiful and profound, but it gets the, it gets the point across. Um, here's another page that I just journaled in. I didn't put any color in, but I journaled some of those quotes from Artful. And, you know, that series, it's hard for God to park a steered car. So I found an icon for a parking meter and a little goofy car I made up out of my head and a steering wheel. And I put that quote in there. And then the other one was, I asked myself, is this art bringing goodness into the world? And so I just put two pieces of fruit. Is it fruitful? Is what I'm about to do fruitful? And then the other quote was, if it occurs to you, make some note of it, refer to it later. Most ideas are bad, but those who get in the habit or process of capturing them and developing them later, deciding which are worth pursuing, they are the so-called creatives. And so I put capture it in a little note, develop the idea, and then decide. This is something I can use later for a painting. Um, and so those were good ideas that I wanted to, to keep. And you see, I'm in, a, I'm in a cheap sketchbook that the pen is bleeding through from the other side, but it, I don't care. It's even better for me because then I don't get too precious about it, Peach. Um, it's just an old, it actually was a kid's sketchbook from art camp and it has some of their drawings that I just left in it. So um, I hope that's helpful to you. I hope you'll do some sketch notes this week. Um, one more last thing as we close, here's your prompt for next week. Let me find it so that you can be thinking about it. If you haven't done this week's, do it because we want to see it. We want to see what you're doing. Um, January 11th, how 2021 was successful or and or 2021 was a year of blank. And you may choose not to focus on COVID. You may choose to focus on something else. But those are two statements that I challenge you to try to illustrate. Look up icons if you need to. Think of one word. Write down the idea first and then try to figure out a way to illustrate it on there. I love you guys. Okay. Love you guys. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good to see everybody. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Good to bye see bye. you. Bye-bye. Doodling, okay? Okay. Doodle. Doodle. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.